Hello, Christ is Risen. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias Antioch and Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Friday, May 22nd, 2020, and here are the readings for today. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 15, verses 5 through 12. In those days, some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to charge them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter. And after there had been much debate, Peter rose and said to them, Brethren, you know that in the early days God made choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them, giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, but cleansed their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why do you make trial of God by putting a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we shall be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, as they will, just as they will. And all the assembly kept silence, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul, as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. And this morning's gospel reading is from John chapter 10, verses 17 through 28. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This charge I have received from my Father. There was again a division among the Jews because of these words. Many of them said, He has a demon, and he is mad. Why listen to him? Others said, These are not the sayings of one who has a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? It was the feast of the dedication of Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my fa- I, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life. So again, in today's gospel, we have this contention between the Jews, the keepers of the Old Covenant, and Christ in his discussions about who he is, what his nature is, who he belongs to. All of these things he has said more or less plainly, either through the words that he uses or through the deeds that he accomplishes. He shows again this tight integration between himself and the Father. Today he says plainly, The Father loves me because I lay down my life, as he instructs him to do, so that I may take it up again, he says. And so, even then, in the Gospel of John, we have a clear indication that Christ came to die. He came to die so that we don't have to. His crucifixion becomes the very thing that cleanses us from all of our sins, and his resurrection destroys the enmity of death that very last thing that keeps us separate from God. So in the Gospel of John, because it is a Gospel of the Resurrection, it continually points out the divisions that exist between the way of the old and the way of the new. So there he stands in the temple, in the very place that they consider the holiest place of their entire faith, and he proclaims to them the new message that People are going to worship God in spirit and in truth, and they are going to worship God because of the things that the Son has accomplished. And we will worship both Father and the Son, along with the Holy Spirit, in spirit and in truth, wherever we may find ourselves. Last week we had the recalling of the Samaritan woman, and she pointed to Jacob's well and said that's the place where the people of Samaria would come and venerate. Whereas the Jews say that worship must be done in the temple. And Jesus reminds her even then that the time is coming and very shortly would come to be where people would be no longer able to worship God either at 
Jacob's well or at the temple, but that that worship would remain because worship is done in spirit and truth. God is spirit and God desires that we likewise worship in spirit and in truth. So as we go, we see again and again and again this tight relationship between the Father and the Son. And it is Christ's wish. And he says so in his um, great discussion right prior to his crucifixion in the Gospel of John, that we follow just the same way, that our will is surrendered to the will of the Father and the Son, that the things that we do may give glory to God and ultimately may well up in us unto eternal life. May God bless you and keep you today and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Have a great day. God bless you. Christ is risen.